My name is Jason Angove, and I'm an instructor at the Takao branch of Daidojuku in Tokyo, Japan. And today's tip, a front kick, push kick, or teep, whatever you want to call it. There are different ways to do it, but one key element, using the hips, okay? So, the front kick is not just a snapping motion of the foot, and this is especially important in your lead leg front kick. You don't want to just snap it out there because that's only using the power of your legs. You want to get the whole power of your hips involved. So that means you raise it up and you push your hips forward. And you're pushing as you extend. Pushing with your hips. Push here, push this motion. Okay, the same as your knees. You add that into your front kick, you crunch your core, you swing your arm, everything's the same motion as a, as a left knee, okay? and you spear it in, pull. and you make sure you kick with the ball of your foot. Use the ball of your foot and really try to dig your toes in at the end. Dig your toes into your opponent, okay? So you're spearing it with the ball of your foot and you dig your toes in. It adds that little bit extra pain to it. So you're here and... and make sure you thrust with the hip. This will give you your front kick stopping power, okay? In Kudo, we tend to fight with a bit more distance than what you might see in say Muay Thai or kickboxing, okay? Because there's takedowns, because there's no ring, okay? So guys tend to come in hard and fast. So if you're not pushing stronger with your hips, what's gonna happen is when they come in at you, you're gonna kick and you're gonna get pushed back. So, you have to stop your opponent. So, when he comes in, make sure you push with your hips and stop him. Don't lean back with your body. This will make it easier for you to fall back and fall over, okay? Make sure you're keeping crunching your core, push with your hips, and keep your body upright as you can. Maybe a little bit of backward movement that's just natural when you thrust your hips forward, but don't try to lean back. Try to stay upright. Another point is don't be lazy with retracting your leg. So after you do your teeth, don't let your leg just drop down like that. This is a lazy way. It makes you fall forward more easily into something. Make sure after you kick, you retract it back to this chambered position and put it down. This gives you a barrier between yourself and your opponent. You can check kicks with it. You can kick again with it. You're in balance. You're ready to fight, okay? And it's a bit harder to catch, okay? If you're laid it like this, it's easier to catch. But if you thrust it in, pull it back, it's faster, harder for your opponent to get a hold of. Okay? So chamber it, fire it, rechamber, and put it down. Nice. Nice. Sometimes you need to be able to lift the leg up and kick straight away without stepping in. If you're using your push kick as a defensive tool, as in as soon as your opponent starts to close the gap, bam, you stop him. You don't have time to step in with your back foot. So you have to eliminate that step sometimes, okay? So that when it comes in, you just lift your front leg straight up, boom, and straight back, okay? And thrust those hips. This will get your kick there in time before your opponent can get to you, usually if your timing and your speed is on. That's a stopping push kick. What about an offensive push kick? Where I want to go on the attack. Two ways to do it. One is the pendulum step where you step in, and deep, and step back. Right? Step in, deep, and step back. You really need to combine that with punches to cover up that step in. Because otherwise, if you just step and kick, it's gonna see the step. But when you add punches, jab, jab, 
step bump. Okay, you can cover up your step like that. But my favorite way to do an offensive tip is to hop. Okay? With the hop, first of all, your stance. You need a narrow stance to do this. You can't do this with your legs out wide. Tips in general are harder to do if you've got a wide stance. Okay? You need a narrower stance to be able to lift your front leg and have your weights distributed on your back foot for balance. Coming from here, it's a big movement. You already missed your opportunity, okay? But from here, it's fast, it's easy. Okay, boom. Now, for hopping in, you're gonna hop on the rear leg, hop. Okay, so, I just push with the ball of my foot into the floor, and I hop on my foot. As I do that, I lift my knee up. So the lifting motion of my knee and the hop of my foot both work to propel me forward. I can be this far away and I can hop in. Okay, make sure you're pushing up the hips, extending, but keeping control of your body. Don't lean back too much. If you lean back too much and then you come in, boom, you can get counted, okay? Keep your body upright. Okay, hop in, boom. Now you're in your stance, ready to fight. Okay, really thrust that hip in there. Once you get this, this is great for setting up punching attacks and knees and other kicks. Because once you hit someone a couple of times with this technique, they'll start to drop their hands. This is a powerful kick, it hurts. It'll get a reaction of making your opponent dropping his hands. Once you see that, you change it into an elbow or a jab or a cross. Okay. He drops his hands, I elbow. Or if he steps back, you can just go straight into punches. Or if he's even further back, okay, I'll hop in. Step into a round kick. Is there a hop in? Oh, oh. Step into a knee. That is an aggressive forward moving front kick, push kick, teep. Work on it. It's a little bit tricky to get this hop at first. But once you get it, this technique is so useful for covering distance, doing damage, and setting up other things. Us. Oh,